So, why do we learn mathematics? Essentially for three main reasons. And they are calculation, application, and motivation. Mathematics is science of patterns, and we study to learn how to think critically, creatively, and logically. But too much of the mathematics that we learn at school is not effectively motivated. And when students ask, why are we learning this? They often hear that they will need in an upcoming math class or on a future test. But wouldn't it would be great if every once in a while we study mathematics simply because it was fun, beautiful, or just excited the mind? Now, I know many people have not had opportunity to see how this can happen. So let me give you a quick example with my favorite collection of numbers the Fibonacci numbers. Fibonacci numbers can be appreciated in many different ways. From the standpoint of calculation, they are easy to understand as 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, and so on. Indeed, the person we call Fibonacci was actually named Leonardo Bonacci, and first appearance of these numbers can be seen in his book named Liber Abacai. In fact, Fibonacci was the first person who brought Hindu-Arabic numerals across, West, across U Europe. But in chapter 12 of his book, there was a problem related to, to rabbits. That's, by the way, what made him famous. There is a question. Imagine one pair of rabbits, one male, one female. They never die or get eaten by someone or something. But they are produced every month. And there is a question, how many pair of rabbits will get in one year? It's very simple. On the first two months, we'll have one pair of rabbits, but starting from the third month, we'll have two pairs of ra rabbits. And then three pairs, five pairs, eight pairs, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, and 144 pairs in one year. But where these numbers can be seen or applied in real life? I think first and most obvious is mathematics and number theory. For example, to find the fifth element of sequence, you just have to sum up first and third. Two plus one is three. Then we come up with arts and design. For example, in construction of cathedrals, temples, or just in photography. For example, take a look at the photo of Taj Mahal. The proportion of the biggest side to the smallest tends to be in a golden ratio. Or professional photographers never put their objects right in the middle of the camera. They used these so-called lattices. And the golden spiral perfectly fits into these lattices. Then we have computer graphics animation, where graphic designers um, can, for example, create logotypes using Fibonacci numbers. For example, in the National Geographic, we have golden ratio buried inside it. If you take site B and divide by site A, you're, you're probably going to have the golden ratio, or in the logotype of Pepsi. There are two circles, one with the bigger uh, radio and one with smallest. And if you divide this radi radii, you get golden ratio as well. Then we come up with cryptography. You might not understand what these photos mean, but I will explain to you. In online casinos or roulettes, there is a thing, a function named hash. This hash might have from 64 to 256 digits, and Fibonacci numbers are used to make this hash more complex in order to prevent from cheating. Then we have biology and natural sciences. If you will make a proportion uh, with height and width in the human DNA, you are going to have the golden ratio as well. Or a number of petals on a flower tends to be 3, 5, 8, 13, and so on. For example, this flower has exactly 21 petals. Then we come up with psychology. Throughout the 20th century, a lot of research were, were conducted in order to examine what Fibonacci number and sequence is. One of them says, nine people were chosen randomly, and, given, and they were given a horizontal line. And they were asked to cut it in any place they want. The mean result was 0 0.6, which is reverse golden ratio. In fact, 
Uh, in fact, this uh, presentation is 16 to 10, which is very close to the golden ratio as well. So there are many more applications, but what I find interesting about the Fibonacci numbers is the beautiful patterns they display. Let's square the first few Fibonacci numbers and see what happens. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25, 8 squared is 64, and so on. When you add consecutive Fibonacci numbers, you, have, you get next Fibonacci number, right? That's how they are created. And what will happen if we sum up squared Fibonacci numbers? For example, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 4 is 5, 4 plus 9 is 13, 9 plus 25 is 34, and so on. Do you see it? The pattern continues. In fact, here is another one. A very great example. What happens if we just sum up these squared numbers? For example, 1 plus 1 plus 4 is 6. At 9, you get 15. At 25, you get 40. At 64, you get 104. You might ask, there is no Fibonacci numbers. So, I'll explain to you. There are Fibonacci numbers, but they are buried inside them. For example, 6 is 2 times 3, 15 is 3 times 5, 40 is 5 times 8, 104 is 8 times 13. So why the squares of 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, and 8 have to end up with 8 times 13? Here's a very great explanation for this. Imagine a square one by one, then add the same square right next to it, then add 2 by 2 square, 3 by 3 square, 5 by 5, and 8 by 8 square. So what is the area of this rectangle? From the standpoint of algebra, it's very easy to calculate as you just have to square the numbers and sum up them. For example, 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 5 and plus 8 squared. But from the standpoint of geometry, you have to calculate it with multiplication of height to the width. For example, uh, and we can come up with 8 times 13. Now, you might ask, what is the golden ratio that I talked a lot about here? I will explain to you. 13 divided by 8 is 1.65. 21 divided by 13, for example, is approximately 1.615. And if we'll start dividing so on, we'll start getting number that is very close to 1.61803 which is the golden ratio, or let's just call it phi. You know what is very strange about phi? I will show it to you. Phi squared is 2.61803. But the same thing happens if we'll just add one to phi, or if we divide one by phi, we get 0 0.61803. The same thing happens if we subtract one from phi. Now, uh, these examples might not be as interesting as you might think, but let's give you an example uh, with a bigger scale, the not scale of our Earth or Sun or even solar system. Let's take a look at our galaxy. Even our galaxy was created with using the golden spiral. Isn't, isn't it very inspiring? Now, to conclude, mathematics is not just solving for x. It's also figuring out why.